I really, I really, I didn't pay attention to because I'm looking at my phone trying to look at this thing. And I can see it, but I didn't even pay no attention to the arms. I didn't even, it wasn't really even bothering me until I seen the arms. That's what freaked me out was the arms. I was like, okay, there's something. Oh, is it, is it the silhouette of a deer's butt walking through the woods? You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know, you see things. Your your eyes will make you see things that aren't there. That's just what we're programmed to do. But when I seen the arms, that's, that's when my heart fell to my feet. The history of our Earth is so different from what we can imagine. Enjoy the journey. The Smithsonian, that if they found out about a large skeleton somewhere, was to go get it. I'm going to assume at least one person is right, because if one person's right, it busts the paradigm. It all goes back to the fallen chariot. And the problem with the modern day church, they have a very truncated view of the supernatural. This backdrop is just pregnant with all kinds of meaning associated with this Mount Hermon event. And this guy defects from the kingdom. That's a big deal. All right, welcome back to Blurry Creatures. We have a fun interview today. It seems like we're getting a lot of stuff. People sending sending us videos and and pictures from Tennessee. We got there was Bigfoot in Goodlettsville. Got a couple of photos on a Christmas morning. There was some footprints in the snow uh, from a couple of years ago, and we posted this video. I don't even. We didn't even know. A couple a couple months ago, maybe it was a little longer than that. About a Bigfoot that was filmed in Baxter, Tennessee. And you know, you, you run social media channels. All of us out there doing these channels are trying to post content. And sometimes you 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 pass on content. And I'm, I'm like, this is a good video. Let's post this. I think this guy filmed the Bigfoot in his backyard. Well, sure enough, his buddy likes the Blurry Creatures podcast and says, hey, I know the guy who made who filmed this. I, I, I talked to him. He's going to come on your show. Tell him, tell him a story. So... Hey, that's rare. That yeah, never happens. It's awesome too because it feels like it's it's in our backyard. It's not too far from where we're where we're at, which is super yeah. cool. It's an area that you and I have both been to, you know, mm-hmm. in, in you know, just outside of Cookville and and you've been to the lake there at Center, at Center Hill Lake. And it's uh it's fun when you know, when the big guy ends up is somewhat in your backyard. And we've talked a lot about the the, the giant account here in Franklin where I live and um so this this mm-hmm. is this is fun and and it's not often that you get to when these videos go viral, right? You have these things that, that go viral on the internet. You know, whatever it is, you rarely have any context or, or, or any backstory or even the individual that you that's taking the video to kind of you know, provide some validity to it, right? Because there's so, there's yeah. so much out there, right, that, that is, is spoofed or faked that it makes trudging through, through that and, and trying to figure out what is authentic, it makes it a little more difficult. So we have the extreme pleasure today of having the guy that filmed the, the video and, and get to hear his story. Yeah, behind the, this this good video, yeah, because you could actually see it, and and Luke and I were able. He was actually in his yard, yeah, and the back in the back of his video as he's talking to us is where he filmed that that, uh, that Sasquatch, yeah. yeah. And this is cool too because, like Luke and I say this a lot on our show, you know, Blurry Creatures gets into some heavy topics, and lately we've been interviewing some people having some really dark stuff. Well, that stuff is important, and we like talking about those things and giving people a chance to air out some of the, the darker things that happen in our world. It's nice to just go back to Bigfoot sometimes and just breath of fresh air. Here's the weird stuff, but it's just like he's 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 in your backyard. We don't know why what he's doing. He's not doing anything crazy. It's not really scary, but it's just fascinating, right? Right. But it is, it, 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 at the same time, it is scary. You know, we'll hear that. I think we'll hear that in this, <laughs> in this interview that... But yeah, it's always odd. Like there's just there's such a, a weird variety or spectrum of, of, of encounters with this creature. That yeah, it's kind of fun to go back to our roots, right? This is where the whole thing started. 
And whenever we can go yeah. back and touch on you know, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, and and that creature, there's a lot of nostalgia, at least for me. Um, it's, yeah, it's, exactly. it's, this, this is in our back. As I said it before, this is in our backyard. So this is going to be a yeah. fun one. So if you're, a, you know, if you're a Tennessean, don't be skeptical because uh, there's a lot of Bigfoot sightings out here in the middle of the country, and, and it's cool. A lot of caves in this area, a lot of lakes, a lot of water, a lot of wooded areas, and uh, a lot of yeah, and. That is how this show started, so it's always fun because I posted a lot of content the last three years of doing this podcast, and this is the first time I think somebody who's actually filmed one of these videos that's gone viral on our channels and several other channels wants to come on. And thanks to uh, thanks to his buddy Clay, shout out to Clay for uh, making this interview happen. And if you guys want to help the show, if you have some sort of weird experience or story and you think it's it's blurry worthy, blurthy. Blurthy. If you think it's blurthy, send us an email, blurrycreaturespodcast at gmail.com. And if you want to sponsor the show and help Luke and I make more content like this, find these stories, dig them up, spend our spend our nights, you know, interviewing people and, and, and editing shows, go to blurrycreatures.com slash members. And it's just it's just two of us just trying to find the weird stuff, edit them, package it together, put it out there, put it in your ears. Can't say thanks to all the enough to all the members who sponsor the show. And send us their blurry stories and uh, kind of help people put together the pieces of weird stuff they experience. I think shooting and filming a Bigfoot is probably one in a million chance. It's it's pretty rare to see one, let alone get a camera out and actually take a decent footage of it. We'll post this video on our channels too. So, uh, yeah. It's good blurry. Luke. We, we're gonna we're gonna have to do a, a Bigfoot excursion at this point. It's, it's like too close now. We got we, we got we got Mount close. City and we got Baxter. We yeah. need to make a big circle. I know. Yeah. But anyway, let's get these guys on the show and uh, hear their story. Well, gentlemen, thanks for coming on Blurry Creatures and talking about this Sasquatch encounter. Appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. No problem. You don't want us to use your name, I guess, right? You can use mine. Well, I'm saying that I, uh, when this happened, I, yeah, I had so many people pulling in my driveway, taking pictures. Just my kids were outside playing, and these people, hey, is this? You know, I, I just didn't know them, so I was like, you know, this is this thing blew up real quick, and it's so I was like, Clay, you're my buddy. You want to do something with it? You know me. You know the story. Here you go. But I'm like, I'm a, I'm a popular guy here and people <laughs> pulling up that I hadn't seen in 20. I'm like, look guys, this, this is too much. I've got people at nine o'clock coming and, and in my yard taking pictures. It's see, that's, that's another thing I will test. See, Daniel lives here in Baxter like I do, but this is kind of a secluded area as service is a little sketchy out here. He lives way out there in the woods. So that's another reason why I'm so envious of his encounters because he lives way out there and has kind of the perfect, Sasquatch area. He's that lives out there in the woods. He's there, the apex of the vortex. Well, y'all aren't too far from us because I mean, you know Nate's in Hendersonville, <laughs> and I'm in Franklin, so we're we're not too far away. Oh yeah, you guys are close. We're real close. Yeah, so we'll be in your driveway about a couple hours. We'll see you there. We'll just do this in person. <laughs> Me, you. Hey, hey, yeah. see, see, that's not a problem because you. You've already said, "Hey, I'll be there." These people were just—I don't even know these people. Yeah, just you know, you know? just <laughs> Nate, I, and the big guy. Just you know, bring them over, get, get them out of the woods there, and we'll uh, we'll sit them down like Larry King live. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my buddy, uh, the the guy that I actually thought was was like trying to pull a prank or something. So he sees Bigfoot literally like taking pictures. He works for me, so he sh he's here every morning. And he's like, Daniel, I've seen two or three over here and there. And sometimes I'm like, Chris, you're that's just a blob over there that you're seeing in the woods. <laughs> but then he goes, to this, uh, he's like, there's a nest over here. So I'm like, okay, what's this guy doing? So anyway, there's all these branches piled up. And I'm like, I don't know what to think about all this. But uh, you guys need to talk to him. He's a dude. He is a dude. Well, good. Don't get too far into the story, man. <laughs> we we got to start at the top here, Daniel. So we'll... Uh... We'll get this. Yes. Nate, you want to get this thing started? We'll introduce you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Daniel, how yeah. much more time do you have to get close to your house so we don't just get started before you can get good service here? Uh, I'm I'm close. I'm good. I'm right at it. All right. 
I guess I need to set still or something. No, you're fine. You're probably fine <laughs> as long as you have good connectivity. We'll uh, we'll let you know if you if, if you if you freeze up or bail out, and we'll just pause. This is okay. all you know. This is all edited and recorded, so we can. Not a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're mostly a podcast and audio show, not really video. So, well, look at us. Well, Jenny, look at us, guys. I mean, it's not a video show, obviously. <laughs> Oh, I absolutely love furry creatures. I was a big fan of the last show you guys with Richie the Barber. That was oh, thanks, a great episode. Man. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah. People either, either love that one or they hated it. It's, I guess that's maybe a lot of the oh, episodes. I was every day at work. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that, Clay. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. We were talking about this before you guys got on. Luke and I were having a little conversation that, you know, we post a lot of things on our social media channel. We posted the video that you guys, that, that you took. Like, I don't know, a couple months ago, and it took off. And sure enough, the skeptics come flooding into the channels, and they're always like, Oh, that's not real. And uh, I could already tell that the voice on the video matches your voice. So I, I'm excited about this because it's rare that someone actually films one of these things. And people film all kinds of weird stuff, and they send it to us every day. And it's like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we have, you, have to, you have to decide for yourself is this legit or not? And AI is getting great, and you can make so much fake stuff now. It's hard to. It's hard to know, but uh, I thought it was legit. I that was my gut take, so I posted it on our channels because I really I try to post things that I think are real on our channel. I don't just post stuff that I know is fake because I know it'll get a bunch of views. Really cool to have you guys on. So Daniel, you're friends with Clay, and and, and you you get this text message one day. If, I'm, I'm I'm assuming Clay, like, hey, did you send the video to him? Like, I just filmed Bigfoot in my backyard. Is that how it's? Is that how this story starts? Or so so what happens is is <clears throat> is um. Uh, me and my daughter are actually in the backyard. I think we just got off the side by side. And, uh, and I look over. It's actually right behind me. That's the spot. So I, yeah, we're, we're going in the house, and I look over and, and just see a, a movement, you know. And I'm like, okay, there's something moving. And then I see something that I'm like, okay, this is, you know, my buddy Chris. He's over there, you know, like uh, – in the woods because he's always looking for Bigfoot. So I was like, that's Chris over there. <laughs> no, when I, when I look, I'm like, Oh, Hey Chris. And then, but what I saw, what, it, what I saw almost scared me. So I'm, I'm with my daughter we're at the corner of the house and, uh, I grabbed my phone just to be honest with you, just to, to go, ha ha, Chris gotcha. Uh, but when I looked at it, we, we stayed beside the house. We, we didn't go any further than the side of the house. So I'm looking at it. and these. I think you covered your mic on your phone. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No problem. So no problem. I'm at the corner of my house. And, and uh, when I looked at it, it was, I don't have words for it. Uh, it was scary, almost like seeing a ghost or something. So I kept my phone on it because I knew it wasn't Chris at this time. I'm just this is not my buddy out here with his blue jeans and a, a t-shirt on looking for Bigfoot. This is something in the woods. So I keep an eye on it. And then it, its arms are like eight feet long or wide or something. So at this time I'm looking at Bailey and I'm like my daughter, I'm like, do you see this? Do you see this? And, uh, then I'm realizing, I guess I put two and two together and this is in my yard. So I, I turn the camera off, grab my daughter go in the house, come back out, untie my pit bull and go over there because it, I was scared. I mean, I'm talking about it. Yeah. It's scared. So I go out there with my pit bull. We look around. He doesn't want to go really any, fr he's on the chain his whole life. He doesn't really want to go over there. So, I mean, I had a, I had my gun and I had my dog and I was looking to take care of whatever I saw on my property. But I didn't really make it out real good until I seen the video. Like the video, I was like, holy crap. So then I just posted it uh, on my Facebook page. And I was like, hey, anybody out there, tell me what this is. And Clay's like, hey, I know what that is. <laughs> so that's, that's how it went. That's wild. So for those of you listening, you're, you're close to your house right now. And, and behind you is where you filmed this thing. Yeah. And this is like, what 40 feet from your house so my house to the wood line is about 25 yards 25 yards that's close yeah i might still be able to throw a football that far 
That's that's not. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you can. <laughs> that's not too I'm far. just curious, Daniel. How big do you think it was? <clears throat> looking at that tree and looking at, so it was between six. Wasn't really huge, tall, six seven foot. It wasn't really huge, and it. And to be honest with you, it wasn't real bulky, but it was just long, like it was long, like what, like its arms was long. It, it was lanky. It didn't have a lot of mass to it, but it it was spooky. Could have been a young one, right? Could have been a younger one. Well, I mean, it was. I think it was uh, evening time, about this time actually. Um, but the field behind my house was was all grown up, so all that was, you know, six feet tall and br- and brush, and then there's a wood line. Mm. So there's a fence there too. So it it was actually right behind the 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 barbed wire fence. Behind you, is there like open land, or is it someone's farm, or is it? Yeah, just, yeah. There's wow. a, there's a there's about uh, 120 acres behind me a field, and then behind that is Center Hill Lake. So then you got the hundreds on hundreds, maybe thousands of uh, lake shore woodland property of the core. The core of engineers. Yeah, to set the scene, everybody. If you're not familiar with the area, you guys are in Middle Tennessee. You're not too far from where Nate and I are in the, in the Nashville area, in Tennessee, guys. And this is Middle Tennessee. And so, you know, in the beginning, we were we were talking a little bit about just about uh, your buddy Chris and and, and your property. Dan, this is the first time you've seen anything like you've seen anything on on the, on the property that like this on this property. On this property, yes. I, I thought I seen something years ago down on Martin's Creek, and I don't know if that was just something that. My eyes was playing tricks on me, so I'm not going to give you a, yeah, I see, you know. Yeah. But um, my my dad, he grew up on the creek, and uh, he had 13 brothers and sisters. They lived in an old house with cracks in the walls. I said it, when it would snow, the, the snow would come through the walls and land on their blanket. So he, he's got a story. Well, they all do. All these kids do, 14, 13 or 14 of them. That one morning, they woke up, and after a big blizzard, the kitchen door was open and there was about a foot of snow in the house and there was huge footprints, not shoe prints, going in the kitchen, out of the kitchen. Now, they had about, because they're old country boys, they had about four or five old uh, mountain cur dogs that didn't leave from under the house for three days wow. after that happened. Oh. So, when I seen what I thought I seen years ago, I was like, that's just because my dad told me this story, you know, and my aunts and uncles told me that. But what I seen at my house is... uh it was more scary than anything. Well, that's wild. I didn't feel threatened. I just, it was weird. It yeah. just, well, it sounds like, well, it sounds like your grandparents didn't have TV because they had 13, 14 kids. So, well, you know, that, that was their problem. <laughs> Feet in the air is always a, a bad problem. You know? <laughs> I love that story. And how far away they live from you now? So that's Martin's Creek. So that's probably about, what do you say, Clay, 12 miles? Yeah. I'm right about 12 miles. Right about 12. Uh, and which, so we're in a really good spot. We have two lakes with uh, thousands of acres of uh, non-hunting land. We have Cordell Hole, we have Center Hill, and they're within 10 miles of each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we have mm-hmm. a lot of land up here that just nothing. Yeah, I've been on Center Hill yeah. Lake. It's beautiful there. It's a, it's a, it's a yeah. beautiful yeah. area. It really is. What are your thoughts on Bigfoot before? Yeah. Did you believe in Bigfoot before any of this? Well, here's the deal. My dad told me that story. My, my aunts have told me that story when they was younger. I didn't know if it was something made up. I never was a really Bigfoot. You know, like I said, I thought I seen something when I was younger, but I can't tell you. Yeah, I seen something because it might have just been a, a brown spot in the woods that, mm-hmm. you know, you know, it was just something that, that caught my eye. But I was never really a, a Bigfoot kind of fanatic or whatever. Loved Harry and the Hendersons. Loved that show. You've got a good taste then. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, but I... You know, on, on the flip side of it, now I, I do I do think there's some kind of alien life, or I don't know what you'd call it, but there's something else out there for sure. Absolutely. And uh, if 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 things can j- jump dimensions, then that's why we've never found a Bigfoot body. That's a good theory. That's a good theory. Actually, I like. It. That's good. So you, so now, so now, what are your thoughts on Bigfoot after you've seen one in your backyard? My thoughts are because I've watched some some stuff, you know. You see those shows where you're like, these people are making this crap up, <laughs> you know, but it's the same yeah. thing. It's like, it's a panic. It's almost a scary. If I seen this thing in the woods while I'm hunting, I'd be freaked out. I would. But this is in my backyard. So it was a different kind of feeling. 
because you know i've it'd be like a you know somebody trying to rob me feeling oh somebody's out there you know it was, it was just a panic kind of it was different because it was in my backyard if someone's in your space yeah it's like an, it's almost like an yeah. intruder in your home you're like this is yeah, yeah. so yeah. so well, you know what do you do so once i calmed myself down and i was like oh i need to go see what this is so that's when you see the video go to it kind of slings over to my daughter. I just grab her and pick her up and take her in the house. That's crazy. Clay, Clay, yeah. you live in the area as well. Um, yes. Sir. And so what are you, what are your thoughts? Have you, have you had any encounters out there? Have you, have you have friends, family that have, well, have had any, any, any brush ups with the big guy or. Well, well, I'm a, what you call a paranormal enthusiast. I have been researching and interested in the paranormal my whole life. My dad, was a big paranormal researcher in our area so i'm just kind of enthralled with everything that is bigfoot paranormal ufos ghosts and daniel and i grew up together he and i were kids together we went to school together our whole life he used to stay the night at my house and my dad used to tell us stories about ghosts and bigfoots and everything else so i've always been interested and i've always researched the paranormal and went ghost hunting and things like that but personally, I've never seen a Bigfoot. I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to. So Sounds like you know where to hang out now. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been terrorizing Daniel about coming out there and camping on his lawn for a time now. <laughs> You're always more than welcome, Clay. Clay, what are your, what are your, what are your thoughts sure on Bigfoot? Since this is how we usually start the show. We kind of did this a little bit yeah. backward because, because you all have a – well, Daniel has got a real experience, so – Clay, what are your thoughts? I mean, you, you live in the area. Well, my thought is that, first of all, I think, Daniel, you are so incredibly lucky, my friend. I think they are an incredibly endangered species, a very old species that's been here on this earth for a long time. Maybe just very few in numbers, very, very smart. I think we should treat it like a sighting of a very rare endangered species right here in our little town. I've always heard that there was a huge number of Bigfoot or Sasquatches in like the central Kentucky area and the northern Georgia area and in East Tennessee. So it would make sense, according to Dr. J.F. Meldrum, things I've heard him say before, that there would be, you know, Bigfoot or Sasquatch in this area as well. I've never seen any pictures or video from Middle Tennessee until Daniel shot this. And when he first showed it to me, I was just blown away. I said, dude, like he said, at first I said, dude, is this, you know, are you pranking me? I, I'll, I'd be cool if you are. I won't be mad. It's all good. <laughs> you know, a good laugh, but we'll have a good joke about it. He goes, no, man, I swear, I swear this, I just shot this and I, I don't know what it is. So he gave me permission. Again, my friend, thank you so much. He gave me permission to kind of post it and put it out there. And I can vouch for Daniel and his family and his wife. They're the most down to earth kind gentle sweet people i've ever known and they're pillars of our community and some of my dearest friends so i believed him right off the bat when he said no this is real i took that right at face value and mm. just from everything i've seen with the video going all over tiktok and i've seen it on tv i think i'm blown away i definitely think it's an endangered species I think it's a very, very cool animal. I would love to see one. <laughs> love to see one in real life. I'd give anything. But I do think they are here. I think they're in our area. I think they're very smart. I think they are probably a very ancient species. I'm not sure what exactly species, but I do believe that they're here. That they're in numbers. And we're very fortunate to have a couple, at least one, in our little area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Daniel, do you hear at night, do you hear anything like sticks or or you see any glowing orbs or do you hear any whoops, hollers? You said there's a nest? I've not, but I, I, can, I can tell you guys a story. I've never heard any, you know, we hear a lot of coyotes. My pit bull goes off all the time and I'll come out here and it's a fox or something after the chickens or something. But, you know, without, without telling uh, stories uh, off the playground, I'm going to tell you the story. When I was 16 and 17... <clears throat> on this very ridge uh because this was this is my wife's grandmother's land so i would come pick my wife up when we were dating and we, we, would, go, we would go park in the field okay <laughs> so um we parked with a blanket on the ground and uh this light like a like a giant maybe 600 700 feet tall had a flashlight shining it right down on us and then it went about 
60 feet away from us and disappeared. But there was no helicopter noise. There was no, this light appeared. It shot, it shot on us and it went away and there was nothing above, there was nothing above us. That wow. literally scared me to death. And I told my wife, I was like, look, we got to go. And you know, she didn't want to leave. She was having fun. But I was like, you didn't see what I just saw. We got to go. <laughs> Other than that, that's about the, the I've, I've never heard, you know, I hunt these woods. I'm in these woods all the time. We ginseng dig. We look for dry land fish. I've never been afraid of the woods, but I was afraid of what I seen in the, mm-hmm. on my property that day. Did you? Yeah, and for the for those listening too, I mean, you're not Daniel. Looks like you don't want to you don't want to get in a fight with him at the bar, the local bar, Luke, because he he'll take you down. <laughs> Daniel's buff. He's been buff his whole life. <laughs> He's been buff when we were kids. Daniel could probably take on a Sasquatch, li- listeners. Like, uh, <laughs> so when you say when you say this, it's good. It's good. A lot of times people don't get the you know the the little clues when we, that we like to do video interviews just to help the conversation, but. When you're saying, you know, you've been in the woods your whole life and this thing made you scared, I mean, it's, it's, it helps give you, give our listeners some, some context that, that this is, this is what happens to most people when they see Bigfoot. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you've been in the, the woods your whole life, if you got a gun in your hand. Yeah. It terrifies people because you're seeing something that shouldn't be there or it's, yes. it's out of myth and legend, right? It wasn't that I was like scared, panicking, whatever, but it was it's not that I, I felt threatened. I should say I should, I did not feel threatened in any way, but the seeing it, I was scared. Was it looking at you? It was looking in my direction. I mean, I, I was looking at it. It was looking at me, but it was, I didn't felt, I didn't feel threatened. It was just weird seeing something in your backyard. That's normally not there and has arms eight feet wide. It's wild. I, I wonder, like, you know, we, we get stories and hear, hear stories about, you know, hunters, you know, lining these up in a scope and then and seeing it and, and feeling like it's, it's almost too human to, to take a shot. And so I guess maybe, maybe, the, maybe it, you had, you know, didn't have any, a feeling one way or the other, but did you, was it a feeling more like you were, you were seeing like a scary person or did it, or it was more than that than an animal? It was not like a, you know, seeing a bear or something. It was like, that's it. It almost felt like a ghostly, mm. uh, I don't want to say spirit, but you know, but, but like ghostly almost is what it felt like. like eerie. Yeah. Yes. Dude, see, that's, I was, uh, but you're looking at it, I, right? How long do you think the whole encounter lasted from the form you looked at it? And, and, and what do you, what do you think it's, can you describe its face? No, no, it was, um, <clears throat> I can't even describe its, its eyes really. Cause it was, it was more of a, a, a silhouette because the sun, um, you know, sets in the west so the sun was setting behind its back so it was more of a silhouette than uh, making out you know facial features or anything i mean you got a sunset you guys are looking at each other you know <laughs> hold, oh, it was holding. it was it was almost perfect it was almost perfect <laughs> my man it was, if, if i'd have had some blue pills with me i might have to <laughs> Uh, we digress. We digress pretty quickly on the show. <laughs> you know, the previous questions I was asking. There's so many weird things that happen with Bigfoot. You know, it's not just these these encounters with something that some sort of primate type of creature. There's all the other paranormal stuff that goes along with it all the time. So that's why we were asking. And and I do think that w- what a lot of people were saying in our channel specifically when I posted this video. Was the length of the arms? The arms don't look natural. They don't look human. Yeah. They don't look like a costume. It seems to reach from one, tr- like behind that tree to another tree, kind of pulling itself. Is that what you think it was doing? I, this is what I think because I've thought about this. I think it was looking at me, but also trying to move. So it put its hand out to feel maybe, just so it wouldn't bump into something, grab something, and pulled itself, grab the tree and pulled itself that way Hmm. if it was if it was traveling in a direction it would have just went right through those trees no no need to pull put its hands up but i think it was looking at me and didn't want to take its eyes off of me so it reached you know reached to grab something to to, you know but didn't want to run into something you know earlier i was speaking with my lovely girlfriend amy and we were talking about bigfoot she's into the paranormal like i am and we were talking about this video in this encounter and we were both talking about how Bigfoot, we kind of believe that it has maybe the ability to 
maybe camouflage, maybe it's fur, or I know it can blend into the surroundings very well because I've always heard about people saying they see it and then it almost disappears. They say it almost, uh, almost like it was there and then it was gone. And I think that's maybe more of a development of like camouflage in its environment more. I'm not sure if it can phase through or if it can, but it seems like it might have the ability to almost. I don't know if it can change its hair color, but definitely blend into its surroundings for something so big. It's always seems like it's there it's and then gone, it's just gone. Yeah. They're just, they got people, they got stories, people of it being right in front of them. And then they, and then they raise a shotgun, or they raise a gun and it's not there. And it's like, you know, almost, you know, 10 feet, which is just like almost, it's impossible physically or like laws of nature for that to be a real, a reality. So yeah, there's, there's so many weird things with this creature and experiences. I, one thing I want to ask you, Daniel, was that you know you'd mentioned sort of on the on the top about Chris and and a nest and the fact that there potentially could be. I want to ask you if you thought there was potentially maybe uh, a group of them or family or or a, a dwelling somewhere on the property or close to it. My buddy Chris is so deep into this Bigfoot thing that we all make fun of it. You know, we're like, buddy, there's nothing over there. Okay, like <laughs> there's nothing over there. And he's like, man, there's a nest over here. And I go over there and it's just a bunch of broken limbs. And I, but you know, I just, he's one of those guys, <laughs> bless his heart that I just, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, I see it, buddy. But, uh, there was actually some, some debris piled up over there. Um, so I guess, you know, those people that you, you, you kind of make fun of or poke at and they're talking about Bigfoot. I see it all the time. I believe that there's people out there that, Okay, you might, guys might think I'm crazy, but I think that, you know, you know, they say kids can see angels. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think certain people can see Bigfoot when other people can't. Mm. I believe that too, actually. I think there's a, there's a lot of evidence that could be true. There, and, there, and there are people that, for whatever reason, have not just one, but numerous encounters. It's like, which, yeah. you know, statistically, and is I, like being struck by lightning a couple more, a couple times. You yes. Know. Now, no. I, I don't know if you guys have heard about the, the Nephilim. Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't know if we have. <laughs> yeah. Fallen angel. Oh yeah, that's stuff. what our show. Our show lives right there, Daniel. So yeah, we. Okay, yeah. so so I'm thinking I've never seen a dead body on the side of the road. And listen, we drive vehicles. There'd be a dead Bigfoot somewhere. If this, if what I seen, the only thing I can think of in my head, because I'm a Christian man, is that these things have to be spiritual. That's why I didn't want to say the word spiritual earlier, oh. because there's got to be something more to these things than just a, a, a animal in the woods. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. There's got to yeah. be. You're, hey, you're right. You're, you're in the right place for that, man. That's uh, my, my buddy Chris says that he's seen a, a almost a 15 foot tall one standing on a limb in a tree that was about a an inch around. And we oh, wow. we're poking fun at it. We're like, well, how does that work? And then I start thinking, well. How does that work? Because it could only work if these things were interdimensional. Mm -hmm. Is that the right word? Yeah. Beings. Like you see it, and boom, it's gone. You, you know, they see, uh, they see the big white Sasquatch over in the mountains, and then they look back, and it's gone. There's only one way that these things, okay, and I know you think I'm crazy, but it, they have to be moving differently than we're moving. I don't think you're crazy at all. Yeah, yeah no, not at all. I mean, we, we've got we've got a number of stories in the show, uh, Daniel, and and uh, and guests, and you know, the one that comes to mind Nate, right away is Jonathan Redbird, who was a ranger on the Navajo reservation, who tracked a number of Bigfoot, only to find out that they're there. They track the footprints, and they disappear in, into, they just stop, and it's not they stop like in a, in a creek or they stop, you know, because they're in snow. They just stop, like when you're tracking and. There's some weird stuff like that. There's some of those old pictures like of, of the Yeti footprints on top on these up, upper ranges that just stop. Stop. They stop dead, dead in their tracks. So when you're talking about the Nephilim, which is fascinating because, you know, one of the things we've talked about ad, ad nauseum on the show would be Genesis 6-4, the Nephilim, and that all flesh was corrupted. The idea that a lot of these, these creatures from mythology, there's a camp of thinking or a line of thinking that all flesh means that they also the animals. Because in the conquest of Joshua, when you talk about the promised land, they were yep. God instructed them to wipe out all the animals as well as the, as the men, as the women and children, men, women and children, which is a hard thing for a lot of a lot of twenty first century uh, people. But when you look at it as a as a hybridization, as this as this mixing of, of angelic and human DNA, you go, hey, that's kind of makes sense. I mean, if they're messing yeah. with the animal stuff, then yeah, you can get 
potentially get centaurs and and satyrs and and all these weird mm-hmm. things. You could even you could even kind of extrapolate the dinosaurs if you wanted to follow that that line of thinking. Yeah. You know, and so there's that's that's not that's not weird at least to us. And I think there's a lot of there's a, a ton of anecdotal evidence, especially what you said is one of the main things, right? Is that as many sightings and thousands over every year across the United States, and then more and more more than that across the world, right? They're seen a lot of places. No one's yet to produce a body, which is really strange, because right. you know the, the, the argument that they find new species of animals probably every year, a few, and they're always small, and maybe they're in Southeast Asia, and so they're undiscovered. This is a large animal that's seen thousands and thousands of times a year, and no one's able to produce anything—not a skull, not a not a carcass, not a nothing. I often wondered if Bigfoot buries its own. Like that is we a do. theory. That's what Meldrum would say. Something along the lines of that, like they have some rudimentary. Sort of, they would almost have to have a, a single place to do it because as much construction as we do and dig caves, uh, put cities in places, they would almost have a, have to have a one special place that they go and do that. Antarctica, they put them all in the in the, in the hollow earth, right? <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> Disney, so, that I, old I, Disney documentary sounds like uh, the Legend of Sasquatch. I haven't seen that. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen it. it if you search it on YouTube, there's this old documentary called The Legend of Sasquatch or The Legend of Bigfoot. Legend of Bigfoot. And it's narrated like an old Disney movie. And this man makes the claim that Sasquatches actually carry their dead up to the Arctic North so that they can bury it amongst the ice. Mm. And it's a I've never heard that theory before that. It's really interesting. It's a fun watch. That's a I, yeah, yeah, wild play, idea. Play, uh, Clay, you remember Frankie? We went to school with Frankie. Yeah. Okay. So his, I seen his mom after posting this video at the gas station, and she <laughs> tells me that that Frankie's what was her name? Crystal. Yeah. So C- Crystal and 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 Frankie's mom was driving down here by Big Rock Market. They pulled into their driveway. Right. The same creature that was in my backyard was in the middle of their driveway, and she says, "Wow." Then she I says, wouldn't doubt it. She says, "Daniel." I grabbed her, put her in the back seat and said, let's just be still and see what it does. She said that it sat there for maybe 35 seconds, walked on across the road. And if you see her, ask her about that. Frankie's mom. You think it was the same Sasquatch? She says she swears to it. She swears to it. Okay. And, And where she was at and where I'm at is only about three miles away the way the crow flies. And then we know they can move. They can move. So that that's uh, so this thing's not out of the realm of possibility. Again, it ties it ties it. It's all tied in with the lake. I don't know why, but well, they live right on the lake on the bottom end of the dam. I'm right here. So well, that would make sense. There's a lot of food source. There's a lot. There's a whole bunch of wildlife in the area, like white-tailed deer. And well, and there's there's no houses on the lake. You don't have a house on the lake for two, three, four hundred, five hundred yards. It's all right. woods. Yeah, even the big guy wants a lake view, right? Maybe they just start living That's down. Right. Right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> get him a pontoon boat. Put that together. You know? <laughs> it is beautiful it around sure here. Is. Hey, hey, guys. I just, I just remembered something I'd like to share with y'all. So, so we have a place down here called Hickey Bottom. On my 16th, this is the only boat ramp in Putnam County to Center Hill Lake. My 16th birthday, me, Levi, Ben, a bunch of my friends went down there and camped for the night. So you talked about rolling rocks and stuff. I have, I have seen that. So we're sitting there alone at Hickey Bottom. If anybody wants to drive up, you could hear them coming for 30 miles away because it's a gravel road. We're sitting there alone, and a rock comes off the hill behind us, uh, and, and it rolls right by us and lands in the water. That has happened. I, I forgot about that till today. Mm. Wow. That is just wild. Sounds like it's pretty, it's pretty squatchy out there. Well, there's nothing. There's nothing out there but the lake. I've been to that lake. I've I've I rented a boat and went out on that lake. It's a nice lake. It's it's just one of those areas. I mean, I I it's funny because I thought you know when I was out there, I was kind of keep my eyes open. But the thing about people don't realize is that Tennessee's the brush out here and the it, it just grows like it's it, it's you can't even walk through it. It's just no. It's incredible. It's cool. not like yeah. there's some places out west where you can kind of hike through. You can hike through areas and it's not as dense and thick, but this is like, it just grows. You cut your grass you three times lost. a week. Yeah. You get lost in the woods very quick out here because it's so thick. 
very sick. So it could be standing in very. your backyard and you don't even know. It, it, it could have been back there before. It, it could have. It could, I mean, that could be why my dog barks a lot at night, but I'd never seen it. Mm. Never even, never even thought about seeing a Bigfoot until that day. That's awesome. See, I'm a I'm a musician. I, I used to tour with Green Jello, and I'm in a band called the Ostrich Primer that does sometimes a lot of gigs with Green Jello. And a few years ago, this was back when my dad was alive. So back probably 10, 15 years ago, we were coming through Southern Illinois, and we were on some interstate coming down, and it was really, really, really early in the morning. And as we were driving, we're doing about 70, 80 miles an hour. Something stepped out in front of our car and it ne we never braked. It never stopped moving. It took three big steps up the side of the road, the middle of the road, and then off the road again. And it never broke stride. And I've often wondered what that was. And for years, I didn't really think it was Bigfoot. I thought maybe it was like the... Uh, Kentucky lizard man, like the lizard man of Kentucky is what I honestly thought it was for forever. But if Bigfoot can move anything like what I saw when I was younger, I wouldn't doubt for a minute that it could cross all Baxter in the same day. Because mm. Baxter is a really small town where it's kind of a Mayberry small town. And so, so small, I've been there once, you've been there twice. It's really pretty, but it's really small. Yeah. And I believe honestly that where he lives and where the locations he just mentioned that story with the gas station and the lights i full on believe that they they probably did see the same creature that day daniel have you had any like neighbors or any other people who come to you and tell you anything or they, they, what's their what, what's the locals reaction around you so my i've i've had a lot of stories uh that lady i was just talking about she she approached me in the store and said hey seen the same thing freaked me out just it, it, we seen it but it, it walked on by, you know, then I've, uh, a lot of people, uh, and I, I think I haven't looked for posts forever, but a lot of people said, yeah, uh, when I was younger, my dad said there was one that lived, uh, behind us, you know, in a holler or whatever it was. So there was a lot of stories that come up and I think Clay can, can, can verify there was 10 or 12 people saying, oh yeah, oh yeah, there's, you know, there's Bigfoot. Uh, in this area we've you know grew up with uh seeing one every now and then over here or over there mm -hmm. uh so there's a lot of stories it's great it's crazy mm -hmm. walks. after he gave me permission to share that video like you like you guys said a lot of haters came out of the bush immediately but all the locals that saw the video yeah. immediately came to his aid he's like oh no that's real that's awesome and it, the outcrying of support has just been amazing. Well, that's what that's what sucks about the old the Bigfoot community, right? The first thing is is you see a, you see a Sasquatch and they say, "Well, where's the picture? Where's the video?" Right? And uh, and right. you actually got video, which is hey, we got, we got to give you a, give you a hand there because most people are too like they're too enamored or they're too freaked out too to slow even take on the trigger. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Well, I, like I said, I thought it was my buddy Chris just goofing off. Uh, then when I seen it didn't have a blue shirt on and a hat, <laughs> I was like, what the hell is that? I mean, you can hear me in the videos like, hey, uh, Chris, you know, and, but it, it wasn't Chris. Yeah, but I mean, it's like, but then when you take the video, then all the skeptics, they just, oh, it's fake. It's, it's CGI or it's someone in a suit. And it's like, you can't win, you know, and all these, with all these people, you just, you know, it's either it's too good or it's too bad. The, there's there's ne there's never a perfect video right i told my girlfriend see if it had been unfortunately if it had been me i probably would have gotten killed because my first reaction would have been probably to just run towards this thing and try to hug it or tackle it or something <laughs> yeah that might not have, I want to might not have worked that. out too well the only thing <laughs> what what got me is i had my daughter with yeah me. exactly i was not thinking about me i mean i've I'm a little rough around the collar, guys. I, I've, I've been in a fight or two. Wasn't worried about me. What I was worried about was my daughter that was seeing the same thing I saw. How do I? I don't know what this thing's capable of. That's what I was worried about. Mm. Yeah. So the thing, this, this thing's really skinny. It's 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 fairly tall. It kind of has more of like uh, sounds more like like orangutan kind of arms, like big long. It had long arms. Did you see how did, did they almost hit the ground? I really, I really, I didn't pay attention to because I'm looking at my phone 
trying to look at this thing. And I can see it, but I didn't even pay no attention to the arms. I didn't even, it wasn't really even bothering me until I seen the arms. That's what freaked me out was the arms. I was like, okay, there's something. Oh, is it, is it the silhouette of a deer's butt walking through the woods? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know, you see things. Your your eyes will make you see things that aren't there. That's just what we're programmed to do. But when I seen the arms, that's that's when my heart fell to my feet. Mm. So, you know, you, you've had a lot of blurry experiences, you know. you have, And it's funny how these things work, right? It's like later on when you finally have an encounter or you have something that's, that's you can't deny, then you go back and you're like, oh. That happened, that happened. Same thing happened to me. I had an experience when I was camping in high school and looking back on it, it was like there was something walking around our tent in the middle of the night and I just assumed it was a bear, but who knows? It, it, you know, the bears came through earlier. So there's just these things you put together in your mind after the fact is what I'm saying. And yeah, it sounds yeah. like you had some kind of weird UFO experience with your lady out in the... May- <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> it was, Or the Lord was just trying to... <laughs> Keep you honest. Well, yeah. kind of off the well the, you know, the thing is, is I seen this. Okay. Imagine shining a flashlight on the ground. It leaves a round, perfectly round light on the ground. Right. I seen this thing approaching me in this field. We're in this big open field. I see this light coming at us and it was about 30 or 40 feet around. And it's coming out of the sky on the ground and it's coming right at us. Mm. And I'm, I'm on top. So, I, uh, you know. <laughs> I just stop what I'm doing and I'm like, holy. And she's like, what's going on? And, uh, you know, continue. And I'm like, no, heck no. And so, so the light comes down, goes across the ground for about, I don't, I want to say 25, 50 yards. And then it goes away. That's the only thing in, in UFO wise that, listen, some guys that night, there was not a, you could hear a helicopter. You could see. See a plane. I didn't see or hear anything. Wow, mm. that's, that's awesome. the that's yeah. the blurry edition of how I met your mother. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> oh, dude, this is this is. I mean, this has been fun. It's it's a great video. It it, it really is a pleasure, guys, to uh, to get to talk to the people that shot the video and get the backstory, right? Because as Nate said in the top, it, oftentimes you see these things that circulate on the internet and and get out on you know, in the channels and. You know, you don't have any idea who who shot it, or you know what their intentions were, or what the, the backstory is. That you you're kind of left with a piece of. And I think that's why, honestly, in some ways, you get a lot of the skeptics, right? Is it is that people just don't have any context for it, right? They they assume people are looking for, you know, who knows, internet clout or attention. Here's the attention you ordered, right? Like that kind of thing, right? Um, but this has been this is cool. I mean, it, it, you guys have a, a great See, I, story, yeah. I can't thank you guys enough for having us on because when we first posted this, I tried to answer as many questions about the video that I could answer, not speaking for Daniel, but I was trying to give people as much information as I could give them based on just what I saw the video. And I'm a huge paranormal enthusiast, but I didn't want anyone to get the idea that this was anything fake put on by me or him or anything. So to get a chance to come on and like him yeah. tell the story and us get to kind of like, clear the air, it's right. awesome. I don't want anyone to get the wrong. This is a killer video you caught, buddy. And I'm Daniel. I can't thank you enough, buddy, for just including me and letting me share it and us get to share this cool thing together. This is I, 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 I'm glad that I let you run with it because, like I said, it blew up so quick that uh, when you got people outside your house taking pictures, you don't know if they're kidnapping your kids or that's why I was like, Clay, I don't care what you do with it. I'm, I, I'm done with it because it, it was, it was scary. My kids would be like, dad, this guy showed up wanting to give you $500 to look at your field. I'm like, what do you, what? And I'm like, <laughs> you know, so I just, I basically just started telling people what video, I don't know what you're talking about, Yeah, <laughs> but it was yeah. on my Facebook. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I was like, oh, you know, you're like, you sound familiar. But, uh, uh, what do you mean? You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah, I, you know that. So when Clay, you know, he, he asked me about this, I was like, "Yeah, buddy, I'm I'm down." Yeah. You know, I'm I'm a hundred percent down because uh, he will. He, I said, Clay, do with it what whatever you want to do. Because I figured people's gonna go, "Yeah, whatever." Uh, uh, nice video. Who's in the monkey outfit? You know, right. <laughs> so, right. yeah. Uh, but that's not how it went. People, uh, I asked people, you know, what do you guys think? A lot of people give us their opinion. 
a lot of people said, you know, ha ha funny. Uh, but then a lot of people came to my house and looked me down, stalked my Facebook, got, all kinds of stuff happened. So I was like, you know, at this point, I'm, I just want to erase everything. Right. But, you know, that was, what, a year ago or something? So It kind of reminds me a little bit about the Patterson-Gimlin story is that, you know, the famous Bigfoot footage in the 60s when they go out and they actually, they were, they were going out there to film it. And they kind of told people that's what they were going to do. And it just so happens they actually filmed a Bigfoot, mm. you know. And so, like you were saying, Clay, it, it can kind of lead to, oh, yeah, you guys go out in the woods looking for Bigfoot. And you just so happen to film it. And it's like, yeah, it, it was a little bit of a coincidence. And we did catch this thing on film. But for years, that kind of haunted them. Because they were blown away. They were shocked that they actually got one on footage. They tried to put it out in the world. They tried to release it. And everyone said it was a man in a suit. And then they, it, it felt like the deep state hired a crew and say, Hey, take the fall. You guys did this. And then yeah. there was all these rumors surrounding right. that footage. And so to this day, to, to this day, people, it's still split. Even in the Bigfoot communities, half the people yeah. think it's fake. And so I, it is an honor for you to, to, to talk about the Patterson Gimlin footage as compared to ours. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> That's a huge, huge. Well, I, it's, yeah, I mean, I, I would give this footage a solid B, you know, like it's, it's, it's up there oui. because it's like, I mean, even the, 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 the Gimlin footage is, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly shaky. He gets a couple, he gets a couple seconds of good footage, but, uh, it's really hard to film one of these things. For whatever reason, most of the time things just don't work out. Either you're you're freaked out, or the camera doesn't you're, work. Yeah, the the when the panic sets in of what you're actually what what's in front of your screen and how close it is to you, that's when your brain says uh, fight or flee. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. So that's I mean, as soon as I've seen arms, and it wasn't you know my buddy, it's not Chris. you know because he <laughs> it's not Chris. It wasn't, it wasn't Chris. You know he's sixty five year old. He's not going to be out there. Uh, uh, walking around unless he's got his blue hat and blue shirt on. So I knew it wasn't Chris. So I was like, okay, it's a, it's a buck walking away from me, you know? Yeah. And then when I seen the arms, the first thing I thought was my daughter, get her, grab her, put her in the house. But you know, it, it almost happens so fast that it happens in slow motion. Then again, it happens so slow. It's in fast motion. It's yeah. very hard to explain. That's very common. Actually, you have this sort of like time, slows i mean that's just what happens when you have sort of the crazy unexpected things happen right or even traumatic things you have this sort of time where time slows down mm -hmm. and then it also goes super fast so it's dude great great job grabbing grabbing the uh the, the phone and getting video thank you know thanks to chris for being chris <laughs> you know that, that made you think he was out there messing with you because we might yeah. not have this great footage and um <laughs> yeah so hey listen middle tennessee squatchy and and it gives uh you know nate may get his i think nate would like to see the, middle, the little people before he sees a, a, a sasquatch but you know we're not too far away maybe we need to get out there and you know root around a little bit out by centerville lake nate and see if we can absolutely it's so close it's it's like we could just we could head down there and, and it's funny you could be so close to these things I'll go cryptid hunting with you guys. come on anytime you want i'll go cryptid hunting with you guys anytime you want hey i, I can i can put you guys on some places hey that sounds good we'll get out of the creek i love it yeah, yeah. when you when you when you release in the t-shirts i saw the i saw the backs the That's baxter awesome. bigfoot when's that coming out yeah <laughs> <laughs> well uh, uh, again um I, <laughs> as long as people would leave me and my family alone i wouldn't mind going nationwide well it probably already is nationwide but um oh, yeah. the, the people alone with my kids i like my kids to play in the yard have fun and, you know, we live on 15 acre property and I just, I like them to just do whatever. But when you got people coming in all the time, yeah. asking questions, wanting to see, it was, it just got to be a thorn in my side. Mm, yeah. You know, who's going to show up at my house when I'm not home? You know, it's just, it just got to be very weird. There's a weird community. And, and when it comes to paranormal stuff in general, no matter what it is, people just, they get so excited about this stuff and they don't realize yes. that the rest of the world is it's like, Hey, I believe. We're in the same world. We we could talk about this stuff, but life goes on, bro. You know, we, we're like standing on that side right? of the fence over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so guys, that behind me also is a animal trail. All the deer come through there. All the coyotes come through there. All the uh, foxes come through there. Mm. And it's very weird that that gap right there in the woods is exactly where he was uh, standing. It's mm. awesome. Maybe he was on the trail hunting himself. 
You got to well, stay on, on the trail, baby. Stay on the trail, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, he, that's exactly where he was at. I'm that's crazy. awesome. You, we can even name him Baxter, right? You, you've yeah. got a lot of good Anchorman play there. We could do some Anchorman quotes. You call him Baxter. <laughs> you know, I, this, yeah. may, this may be the this may be the the genesis of so, of something great for you know as far as his merch for you. So. We'll take ten percent. No, <laughs> hey, no problem. No problem. <laughs> no, this is great. This is great, guys. You guys are awesome. This is uh, yeah. You at least need a bumper fun. sticker that says "I yeah. saw the Baxter Bigfoot." At least, come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I sent him Clay's. Clay's got a nice bumper sticker that says "Cowboys butts drive me nuts," but I, I didn't. I didn't want one. <laughs> All the secrets are coming out here. <laughs> <laughs> but you're great, dude. Thank you so much for coming yeah, on our fun. show, though. This is I a lot know, of fun, guys. Yeah. Man, this has been fun. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us on, yeah. guys. Yeah. I know it's not easy to want to talk about. It. I'm sure a bunch of podcasts and people wanted you to talk about it. So we appreciate you giving us a, some time. A lot of people have, have begged me and asked me, but Clay is my friend. And when he asked me about you guys, well, thanks, Clay. I, 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 he's my buddy, yeah. so he's not going to get me into anything that that I wouldn't uh, enjoy or whatever. So I give 110 percent of the credit to Clay because w- without him, I'm not kidding you. I've had people offer me money to be on their podcast and stuff, and I'm like, "Look, guys, this is uh, this. It's not. I, I don't. I don't want this to get any bigger because I've got strange people showing up at my right, house, you right. know. But with when Clay asks me, I'm going to do whatever. He's my buddy, you know. We haven't we haven't really hung out in many, many, many years, but he's my friend. That's awesome. Thanks. You and I go back. I'll do anything for you too, my friend. That never that won't ever change. Well, so, I mean, I, I'm surprised you didn't show me traps when they came on the property. You're just like, y'all see, y'all yeah. seen this? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I would, yeah, I haven't missed a shrug day in a few in a few years, but here we are, baby. <laughs> have you put I, up, I have it. you put up any game cams or anything out there? Or uh, I, so I do have uh, cameras at my daughter's window. Um, I do have a. So we, we've got some cameras across uh, the railroad tracks right in front of my house, which, what was it, three days ago, well, there was a guy that broke into some houses and we, we caught him on camera with the game trail, the oh, game good. cameras. But uh, never seen anything on game cameras that, that is not ever, that's not supposed to be out there. I've never, you know, I, I could I could make up a blue million stories about this and that and the other, but this is the, the first time I've ever had an experience that like this of any kind. I love it. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, this was fun. Hey, I appreciate you guys. Yeah, good to meet y'all. Yeah, yeah. appreciate. Very it. Very nice to meet you. All right, boys. Well, dude, we'll let you know when this. Uh, we'll give you a shout when this drops out, and uh, appreciate it. Yeah, again, appreciate it. Anything else happens out, out there, Baxter boys? You, you know, you're our blurry correspondents on the ground. So let us know. Yeah, you know, if if, right, if, right, if, sure. if old Baxter comes back. You know, maybe pop, maybe pop a, a two, two, three in him, and we, and we, and we, you know, we have something going on here. <laughs> That's possible. I could, I could, I could try that. Yeah, next right. Time. All right. All right. <laughs> Guys, I appreciate yeah. everything. Yep. Be good. You, well, you'd really have some people showing up then. Yeah, you, you would. Know? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We didn't put yeah, you. People, we put you yeah, in witness protection. Like, uh, we put you in witness protection. People. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we got uh, we got some place for you to hide. Just, you need to come. We just come yeah. west a little bit. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I appreciate it. Guys, be good. Thank yep. you so much. Thank you so much. much. Nate, Luke, y'all have a good yeah, night. Yeah, you too. Daniel, thank thanks, you Clay. So much, thanks, Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. See you guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. I don't know how to get off here.